This is your orientation to the Northwest Regional Correction Center. Please pay close attention to the information contained in this video. This video has been prepared for your benefit and will help to prepare you to have a successful stay in this facility. If there is anything contained in the video which you do not understand, or if you have any other questions, contact a corrections officer after you have viewed the video. Your behavior will be judged in large part on 1. How well you follow facility rules. 2. How well you get along with staff. And 3. How well you get along with other inmates. All of the rules you will need to know are included in your inmate handbook. This handbook contains rules of conduct designed to maintain security, standards of cleanliness, and discipline within the jail. You should read this handbook carefully so you know what is expected of you and what could happen if you choose to violate facility rules. You are responsible for the information contained in this handbook. If you have questions about information contained in the handbook, contact your housing unit officer. The Northwest Regional Correction Center has a zero-tolerance policy towards inmate sexual abuse and sexual harassment. No inmate or staff member has the right to pressure you to engage in any sexual act. Any sexual activity, including consensual sex between inmates or staff and an inmate, is prohibited and will be fully investigated. If you are victimized or are aware of another inmate who has been victimized, you should report this immediately. Staff will protect you from the assailant, refer you for a medical examination when necessary, and will contact law enforcement. You have the right to be free of sexual abuse and harassment. You also have the right to be free from retaliation for reporting incidents of sexual abuse and harassment. You can make a report to any Northwest Regional Correction Center staff member, outside law enforcement agency, or victim's advocate. Reports can be made electronically through the kiosk, in paper form, through the mail, or by telephone. Phone numbers for victim advocates have been entered into the inmate phone system, can be made free of charge, and will not be recorded. Violators of this policy will be subject to a full range of criminal and administrative sanctions. Outside law enforcement agencies will be contacted to conduct a criminal investigation into any allegations of sexual abuse that is criminal in nature. Referrals for prosecution shall be made to the Polk County Attorney's Office. If you are the victim of sexual abuse while incarcerated, you will be provided with medical attention and mental health services and will be housed in a manner to help ensure your safety. You can avoid victimization by following these simple steps. Notify staff immediately of any inappropriate touching or threats of forced sexual activity. Do not become indebted to other inmates. Do not accept protection from other inmates. Do not engage in consensual sexual activity. Be wary of inmates who are overly friendly and who take an interest in you. Do not go into other inmates' cells. Report any witnessed sexual abuse immediately. Once you have completed viewing this video, you will be placed in the pre-classification unit. You will spend up to three days in this unit. Staff of the Northwest Regional Correction Center will be documenting your behavior, both positive and negative, during your incarceration. This information will be used to assist in determining your classification. You will be assigned a classification based on your behavior and other criteria, such as the nature of your offense and disciplinary history during previous incarcerations. While in the pre-classification unit, you will have access to the day area, television, telephones, and video visitation booths and commissary machines. Sergeants will visit this unit regularly, and corrections officers will be available to answer your questions. Once you have been classified, you will be assigned to a housing unit based upon your classification. Before entering the pre-classification unit, you will be issued uniforms, linen, towels, and basic hygiene supplies. You are responsible for the condition of jail-issued clothing and supplies which are given to you. Clothing, linen, and supplies are not to be altered from their original state. This is an important rule to remember, and failing to follow this rule will result in disciplinary action. If you demonstrate normal adult behavior while you are assigned to the pre-classification unit, you can expect to be classified as general population. General population will afford you the opportunity to earn you even more freedom and opportunities. 
NGP, you will have expanded access to telephones and vending machines and will be assigned a cellmate. You will also have access to programs and services you may not receive during your time in the pre-classification unit. Once you are assigned to a housing unit, your housing unit officer will be available to answer any questions you may have. Any requests for information should be made by submitting an electronic inmate request. This request should be submitted through the kiosk in your housing unit. Your housing unit officer will assign you to a cell. If you are assigned to a cell on the first floor, you must stay on the first floor. If you are assigned to a cell on the upper level, you will only be permitted to be on the upper level for the purposes of going to your cell or showering. Loitering on the upper level is not allowed. When you are assigned to a cell, a housing unit officer will inspect the cell with you and list any problems. You will be held responsible for the condition of your cell. You will be responsible for cleaning your cell daily and making your bed any time it is not in use. Here is a picture of what your cell should look like. Failing to maintain your cell properly will result in prolonged periods of lockdown or could even subject you to disciplinary actions. Your personal belongings and facility property must be stored in your bin at all times. Under no circumstances are you allowed to tape anything to walls or your bunk bed. Cell windows should never be covered. In every cell is an intercom button. This should only be used in emergency situations or during lockdown times. If you have a non-emergency question, wait until a non-lockdown time and ask your housing unit officer. Most cells are equipped with a button which will allow you to unlock your door during non-lockdown times. It is important to remember that when you close your door, it will lock and you cannot get back in. When you are out of your cell during non-lockdown times, you must leave your cell door completely open so that you do not obstruct the walkways. This is a very important rule to remember. Cells located in work release units are equipped with a button which will allow you to control the lights in your cell. Scheduled lockdowns, which are defined as time in your cell with the door closed and locked, will occur periodically throughout the day. It is important to understand that unscheduled lockdowns may occur periodically. When an officer announces lockdown, you must immediately go to your cell and pull the door completely closed. This is a very important rule. Failure to follow this rule will result in disciplinary action. It is a rule that you are not to go into anybody else's cell, and you should not allow anybody else into your cell. Anytime you are out of your cell, you must be properly dressed. This includes covering your upper and lower body and wearing footwear. The money you had in your possession at the time of booking will be placed into an inmate account and you will be provided with a Debitech card. This card will allow you to purchase additional hygiene items as well as vending and commissary items. The PIN number which you have been given is for your card and account. It is important that you remember the PIN number and do not share this number with other inmates. If you are indigent, meaning you have less than $1 in your account for seven consecutive days, you may use your Debitech card to purchase hygiene items. So it is very important that you not lose or misplace this card, even if you have no money. Commissary is a privilege that can be restricted or lost for disciplinary reasons. If you lose your card, notify the housing unit officer immediately. You will be charged a $5 fee for any lost or damaged cards. Your ability to remain in general population will be a result of your positive behavior. Those inmates who are unable to demonstrate appropriate behavior will not be able to remain in general population. Remember, you are responsible for your behavior and will be held accountable for your actions. You always have choices. If you are confronted or threatened by someone, you should contact the officer in the unit, walk away, or go to your cell and lock yourself in. One of the alternatives to general population is disciplinary segregation. Inmates will be classified to the disciplinary segregation unit for violating facility rules. All facility rules and potential penalties for violating these rules are included in your handbook. Your physical surroundings in disciplinary segregation are much different than general population. Cell accommodations in disciplinary segregation unit are constructed of steel and concrete. You do not have access to programs and services. 
There is no TV in disciplinary segregation unit. You are locked in your cell 23 hours per day. DS inmates are allowed out of their cell for only one hour per day for the purposes of exercise and a shower. This is not the place you want to be. You will be allowed access to visiting as long as you follow the rules while visiting. Visiting hours are posted in your housing unit. Visitors must be at least 18 years old or accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. Medical staff are on duty Monday through Friday. You must submit an inmate request to see medical staff. Medical staff will review your request and will schedule a time to meet with you at the earliest available time. Non-emergency problems are not addressed immediately. If you are having a medical problem of an emergency nature, please notify your housing unit officer immediately. The Northwest Regional Correction Center offers a variety of programs, services, and activities for inmates. Those inmates who demonstrate appropriate behavior will have regular access to these services and activities. Some of the programs and services which are offered include recreation, education, individual counseling, and a variety of groups. A program and activity schedule is posted in your unit, and notices are also posted in the kiosks. You are encouraged to take advantage of the programs and services which are provided, as these are intended to provide positive outlets and aid in the rehabilitative process. If you would like to meet with a member of the Program Department for Individual Counseling, please submit a request through the kiosk. If you meet the eligibility requirements for work release, or STS, you must submit a request to the Release Activity Programmer. Eligibility requirements include the following at a minimum. 1. Being under sentence or awaiting sentence with a plea agreement which specifies local incarceration. 2. Release status authorized by the court or referring agency. 3. Providing a urine sample. And 4. Working within a 50-mile radius or within Polk, Norman, or Red Lake counties. A program staff member will go over the work release rules with you and will assign you a work release locker. You must store keys and other personal belongings in the boxes located in the work release vestibule. You will be required to change out of your jail-issued clothing before leaving the facility for work release or STS. When you return from your approved release activity, you will be required to change back into jail-issued clothing. If you attempt to bring items back into the jail which are not allowed, you will be subject to disciplinary action. Remember, release status is a privilege and can be taken away for violating facility rules. Please feel free to contact your housing unit officer with any questions you may have. And be sure to read your inmate handbook carefully, as there is more detailed information contained there. It is the goal of NWRCC staff to maintain a clean, quiet, and safe environment for everybody in the NWRCC. Good luck! Hello, this video provides a brief introduction to COVID-19. COVID-19 is a respiratory illness, which means it affects the lungs. COVID-19 has not been found in humans before. The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, cough, muscle aches, headache, loss of taste and or smell, trouble breathing or shortness of breath, sore throat, diarrhea, nausea and or vomiting, and a runny nose. Some people who have COVID-19 don't have any symptoms. COVID-19 is spread from talking, coughing, and sneezing. COVID-19 is more likely to spread when you are close to someone within six feet who has COVID-19. It may also be spread by touching your face after touching things that someone who has COVID-19 has also touched. The people at higher risk of getting very sick from COVID-19 infection are older adults, those who are 50 years or older, people who have medical conditions like heart disease, diabetes, or lung disease, and people with compromised immune systems. However, young, healthy people can still be infected and spread COVID-19. People can have the infection and spread it, but may not feel sick. This is why it is important for everyone, even if you feel healthy, to follow best practices in reducing spread of the virus. There are a number of ways that we can reduce the spread of the virus. To help reduce the spread of the virus, cover your coughs and sneezes. Wash your hands and do not touch your face. Wear a mask when possible and try to keep at least six feet between yourself and other people. If you are experiencing any of the symptoms of COVID-19, let jail medical staff know right away. COVID-19 is different than the flu in a few ways. 
First, COVID-19 is more likely to cause trouble breathing and serious infection than the flu. It is more contagious than the flu and does not have a vaccine available like the flu does. Cities and states have had different responses to COVID-19. Many places are encouraging social distancing. This means not gathering in big crowds, staying home as much as possible, and staying at least six feet apart from other people. The jail is taking several steps to stop the spread of COVID-19, including increased cleaning, limiting who can come into the jail, and increased monitoring of people who may be sick. Thank you for your attention to this message. We appreciate your efforts in helping reduce the spread of COVID-19.